Good morning and welcome to King's Church in Frodham this morning. This morning we welcome Ian Clarkson from Fullwood Free Methodist. He's the associate pastor there. He's going to bring God's message to us. We would love to hear from you. If there's anything that you need uh, us to pray for, or if there's anything you need us to help you with, just please let us know and get in touch. At some point during the service, our contact details will be displayed. Otherwise, you can see them on our website. And this morning, our reading is being brought to us by Elwyn. So, Elwyn, over to you. Today's reading is from Daniel 1, verses 1 to 21. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord delivered Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand, along with some of the articles from the temple of God. These he carried off to the temple of his God in Babylonia, and put in the treasure house of his God. Then the king ordered Ashpenaz, chief of his court officials, to bring into the king's service some of the Israelites from the royal family and the nobility. Young men without any physical defect, handsome, showing aptitude for every kind of learning, well informed, quick to understand, and qualified to serve in the king's palace. He was to teach them the language and literature of the Babylonians. The king assigned them a daily amount of food and wine from the king's table. They were to be trained for three years and after that they were to enter the king's service. Among those who were chosen were some from Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael and Azariah. The chief official gave them new names. To Daniel, the name Belteshazzar, to Hananiah, Shadrach, to Mishael, Meshach, and to Azariah, Abednego. But Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine, and he asked the chief official for permission not to defile himself this way. Now God had caused the official to show favour and compassion to Daniel, but the official told Daniel, I am afraid of my lord, the king, who has assigned you food and drink. Why should he see you looking worse than the other young men your age? The king would then have my head because of you. Daniel then said to the guard, whom the chief official had appointed over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael and Azariah, please test your servants for ten days. Give us nothing but vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then compare our appearance with that of the young men who eat the royal food and treat your servants in accordance with what you see. So he agreed to this and tested them for 10 days. At the end of the 10 days, they looked healthier and better nourished than any of the young men who ate the royal food. So the guard took away their choice food and the wine and they were to drink and give them vegetables instead. To these four young men, God gave knowledge and understanding of all kinds of literature and learning. And Daniel could understand visions and dreams of all kinds. At the end of the time set by the king to bring them into his service, the chief official presented them to Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar. The king talked with them and he found none equal to Daniel, Hanani, Mishael and Azariah. So they entered the king's service. In every matter of wisdom and understanding about which the king questioned them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and enchanters in his whole kingdom. And Daniel remained there until the first year of King Cyrus.
This is the air I breathe This is the air I breathe Your holy presence Living in me And I Hello, first of all I want to say it's great to be with you as part of King's Church Frodsham today and I hope you're all well. I'm sad that it's not in person that I join you today but I bring greetings to you from everyone at Forward Free Methodist Church and know that we uh, pray for you as well. And I'm just so thankful that we can still meet in this way using technology and just thank for all those behind the scenes who are working to make this happen, not just in your church, but in our church as well. We're so grateful to them. So two Sundays before lockdown, um, remember those days so long ago now? Um, I spoke at Forward on the theme of resolve, deciding firmly on a course of action, looking at Daniel chapter one, and not even imagining that for many of us, our resolve would be tested to such a huge extent uh, since then. So let me just start uh, this morning with a question. How is your resolve? And more importantly, how are you? I hope you're okay. I hope you're doing good and your resolve is holding out uh, at this time. So the reality is that I'm sure for a lot of you, you're going through a difficult time or hard trials, whether it's your health, your relationships, your work, your finances, or simply the fact that we're in such a strange season and can't meet up with anyone as we would love to do and in the normal ways that we would do. Um, but today we're going to look at uh, the book of Daniel again in chapter three, um, reading from verse one onwards. And today's theme uh, that I'd like to share with you is courageous faith. So to give you a bit of the scene, King Nebuchadnezzar has built a statue and invites all the important people, the VIPs of Babylon, to its dedication. And it's announced that when the people hear the sound of all the musical instruments, they are to bow down and worship his statue. Anyone who disobeys him will be immediately thrown into a blazing furnace. That's a bit of a harsh uh, consequence for not actually bowing down and worshipping this statue of his. But such is his ego, I guess. So everyone does as they're told, except for three. These three guys, if you read in Daniel 1, are the same ones who built their resolve and are actually probably teenagers at this time. So in Daniel 1, they had resolved not to eat meat that had been offered to idols. Now it's going up a few levels. They continue to stand firm. Their resolve is sure, even though this could cause them to be thrown into a blazing furnace. So there are times when it takes courage to just simply live a life of faith a life that puts its trust in God. When these young guys are brought before the king to answer for themselves, they have no defense. They are guilty before the king and his command, but their relationship with God is more important to them. So they are guilty because they've gone against what the king has said, but their relationship with God is more important than that. 
they don't doubt the power of God to deliver them from this harsh consequence of their actions, of their standing out. But they have no right to presume that he will. See, faith obeys God instead of following man. They didn't have to take the dramatic circumstances of their life and post it in great graphic detail on social media and ask for a consensus of opinion of what they should do next. They had predetermined and planned to honour God no matter what. They say, we will be obedient to God no matter what. We will not follow what everyone else is doing. They are ready to take the consequences rather than compromise their faith. So what they show is that no temptation to compromise beliefs is overwhelming. It is possible to stand even in the face and the pain of death, whether from burning or as we see elsewhere in the book of Daniel, whether it's by execution or from wild animals, it is possible to serve God in an alien culture or a time like lockdown that we've been in that is for many of us alien or foreign to us. We can still follow God. They will not be involved in idolatry and are willing to stake their lives on the one they serve. Obviously, when the king has just made this decree and has built this statue and has made his commands to the people, it infuriates him that these guys might actually um, do something that is against what he wants. The heat is then turned up. The furnace is made hotter. The young men are bound tightly. There's no way of escape. For you right now, it might feel like this. The heat is on. In fact, it's turned up. Things are getting tougher. You're feeling bound or confined by the stress, the fear, the doubt, the emotions, or whatever else it might be for you. Maybe even questioning where God is in all of this. But know this, God is not confined by the things that you and I see, the circumstances we find ourselves in. He is the same yesterday, today and forever and he is able to do exceedingly and abundantly more than you or I ever may dare to ask or imagine. Our faith can be one that says that no matter what, God is with us and we can believe no matter what we see before us. What if God doesn't do what you're asking or believing for him to do? What do you say then? Faithful obedience is our responsibility. The outcome is God's responsibility. Living out what God has called us to do that's our job and that's where it ends. What God does after that is where his continues. It is entirely up to him. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego knew that. They say we will do what is right and we will trust him with the outcome. Wow, that's courageous faith. Sometimes God will show you his power in all kinds of ways through the course of your life. But often, and you may need to hear this for yourself today, the time when you will know his presence best is when you are in the fire of the trials that you face. But be encouraged today, because in 1 Peter 1 verses 6 and 7 it says this, Though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials, these have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory and honour when Jesus Christ is revealed. Those three young men went into the furnace, but they were not burned. Not even their clothes were burned. But there was something that did get burned, the fire burned the ropes that bound them. Because we read that as the king looks in, they are unbound, unharmed, and walking around with a fourth 
who looks like the son of the gods. The fire burned that which bound them. Maybe the very situation that you find yourself in right now, the fire that you are facing now, is the means that God wants to use to ultimately set you free, to be who he wants you to be, to trust in him like never before, to come to a place of courageous faith that trusts in God, stands up and stands out for God alone. No matter what, a faith that is of greater worth than gold. And today, courageous faith for you might actually be to place your faith in God for the first time. Or maybe for you, courageous faith is actually to come back to God again, because you know you've been putting your trust and your faith somewhere else. To let him into your life through Jesus Christ. To have the courageous faith that says, no matter what may come my way, I will honour God with all that I am and all that I have. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, as we face our fears, if we're feeling afraid or timid, or feel like the world is closing in around us, remind each of us of who you are and who I am in you. You are strong and courageous, the almighty King and loving Heavenly Father. You have said in your word that as I wait on you, I can take courage because each of us can know you are with us and you will empower us with the strength and the courage that each of us needs to face what stands before us. Remind me of who you created me to be and what you have already done for us through Jesus Christ our Lord and Saviour. I trust that you will keep your promises, that you see me as your own, and I trust you in the circumstances that I face right now, and that victory is on the other side. We will not let fear or intimidation stop us from being obedient to you. Give each of us the grace, the wisdom, and the courageous faith that we need by your Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. It's been great to be with you this morning. God bless you and God keep you. And may you have courageous faith this week.
just want you and nothing else and nothing else nothing else will do I just want you and nothing else and nothing else nothing else will do I just want Nothing else.